Well, hey, everybody. So in spite of everything that's going on in the world, I actually have a new movie to talk about. How'd that happen? That movie is Trolls World Tour, the sequel to the 2016 film Trolls, directed by Walt Dorn and David P. Smith, and starring the voice talents of Anna Kendrick, Justin Timberlake, Rachel Bloom, and a whole mess of other people from the acting and music worlds. In Trolls World Tour, we find ourselves in a world with six troll kingdoms, and this world is apparently made up entirely of couch cushions, and each troll kingdom has its own type of music. And they were all perfectly happy making their own music and just minding their own business until one day Barb, the queen of the rock trolls, decided she wanted to take over all of the other kingdoms and unite them all under one type of music, hard rock. And so it is up to Poppy and her friends to stop Barb and save music. So I had never actually seen the first movie. Um, all I knew about it was that it was some jukebox musical and it was apparently very well reviewed and very popular and made a shitload of money. So I figured I should probably watch the first movie before diving into the sequel. So I did. And I don't get it. I didn't think it was bad or anything. It was fine, but why was this as popular as it was? There's, as far as I can tell, really nothing special about it, but somehow it made a shitload of money. I just, I, I don't get it. As far as I can tell, it's just yet another jukebox musical, and jukebox musicals are pretty much universally average. Some of the songs worked, some of the songs did not. Uh, the singing was fine, the voice acting was fine, the animation was pretty good, it's very bright and colorful. The jokes really did not land. In fact, there's really not much in the way of actual jokes in Trolls. There's just sight gags, a lot of which involve poop. I was surprised by just how much pooping there is in this movie. Some trolls poop glitter, some poop cupcakes. I will not be first in line to eat those cupcakes, let me tell you. And the story really didn't do much for me. I can at least appreciate where they were trying to go with it. Like, the message was okay. It seemed like, really, there were two messages. One, happiness is everywhere if you just know where to look for it. And two, you shouldn't change who you are for someone else. Although that part of the story seemed kind of like an afterthought. That message focuses on the Bergens, who are the villains of the story, and it seemed like they got halfway through the movie and realized, oh, we didn't actually do anything with these guys apart from just making them one-note villains, so I know, we'll throw in a love story between the prince and the servant girl. It's certainly not a bad message, but the execution just felt half-assed. And then we get to Trolls World Tour, and I can say for certain, Number one, you do not need to see the first movie before seeing the second. And also, I think the second movie is definitely better. Part of this is because of Rachel Bloom, who was very good as Queen Barb and was clearly having a lot of fun with the role. Also, her father is voiced by Ozzy Osbourne, which is pretty awesome, even if he only had like five lines, and I think two of them were the same line. And I don't mean they had him record the same line twice, I mean they had him record it once and they used it twice in the movie. Another thing in this movie's favor, the Bergens are nowhere to be found apart from a brief appearance in a mid credit scene. And I am okay with that because they never really did much for me. The message was a bit more well thought out this time. Basically, all musical tastes are valid, so just like what you like. And I can get behind that. The songs were a bit better this time around, mainly because they changed some of the lyrics so the songs would actually fit the story, which I thought was a good move. Plus, this movie had some actual jokes, and some of them actually worked. Like, let's get tattoos all over our body except our faces in case we need office jobs. Like, I like that. That was good. But despite being better, it's still just okay overall, and I still don't get why this franchise became as popular as it is. Now, to be fair, I am not in the target audience. I am probably about 30 years too old to be in the target audience. And me not getting this movie may say more about me than it does about the movie itself. Maybe this is just a sign that I am finally turning into the curmudgeonly old man that I was always destined to be. But still, I just... I don't get how this became so popular when it's just... Fine. It's still got good voice acting, the animation is still fantastic, the story was at least coherent, but it's just fine. 
And like any jukebox musical, some of the music choices were still questionable. And one that really stands out was the scene where the pop trolls visit the country trolls and try to win them over by singing a medley of the greatest songs of all time. Now, first of all, the oldest song in this medley is from 1991, so all time my ass. And I'm also going to say greatest my ass because here are the songs in that medley. Wannabe, Who Let the Dogs Out, Good Vibrations, the Marky Mark version, not the Beach Boys version, uh, Gangnam Style, Hey Baby, Drop It to the Floor, and Party Rock Anthem. Now, most of these songs I am okay with, except Party Rock Anthem. That song sucks. LMFAO sucks. They are bad and they should feel bad. But otherwise, the songs are okay, but even if you're a fan of those songs, would you really say they belong in the greatest of all time? I mean, you could maybe make a case for one or two of them, but Who Let the Dogs Out? Gangnam Style? Greatest of all time? Anything by Pitbull? Really? Really? And... Party rock anthem, fuck off. No, 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 no. So overall, the movie is fine. But is it worth paying 20 bucks to see? Because that is the video on demand price since this is a new release to video on demand in lieu of releasing it to theaters. So they're charging theater prices. And I get why they're doing that, but I think that's going to be a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow because when you're used to paying like five bucks tops for a rental, paying four times that amount, ooh, I don't know how many people are going to be willing to do that. And personally, I don't think you should because I don't think it's worth 20 bucks. When it comes down to a real rental price, sure, go ahead. If your kids want to see it, go ahead and let them watch it. It's harmless. It's fine. They'll probably enjoy it a lot more than I did, but it is not worth 20 bucks at all. And that's all I got to say about Trolls World Tour. Till next time, take care.